Hi there, uh, welcome to The Hangout today. My name is Eleanor McGrath and I am the head of press here at Web Summit. And um, I am welcoming you all today to our Google Hangout with uh, James Ball, who is the special correspondent for BuzzFeed News. So welcome James today. Um, we are very grateful to have you here and um, thank you so much for joining us. So just to give a bit of background on who I am and where what we do in the team. So I work on a team of four people and we run the media team at Web Summit. And at Web Summit this year, we are expecting over 1,500 journalists from around the world to come and report on the event. And they're there to um, tell all the stories of the speakers and the startups that are coming. And today we're going to kind of look at, you know, what is the best way to um, talk to some of these journalists and what better way than be joined by James. So welcome, James. Um, thank you for coming along. As I said, can you kind of tell the guys and our listeners and viewers a bit about yourself? Hey, um, thanks very much for having me here. Lovely to chat to you all. Um, so I am a journalist at BuzzFeed where I've been for about a year. And before that, I was at The Guardian for about five years. And before that, I was in television. So. I've kind of hopped around old and new media. Um, I have kind of a bit of a strange job where I do a mixture of investigations, I do data journalism, I do tech, but kind of more as issues rather than companies. Um, and so sort of jump around a bit. And I've been coming to Web Summit uh, for about four years now. Excellent. And um, so what was your first experience at Web Summit then? That was when it was quite young, obviously. So yeah, it was a relatively early one, um, and I sort of came to it really, um, we were in the middle of doing the Edward Snowden reporting, and so obviously that was kind of quite a big topic um, through that year, and a lot of people were pitching privacy and security, and so I was sort of meeting some companies in it and sort of moderating and doing some talks, um, and so my interest kind of was in those debates and what was important for those companies there. So I went with quite a specific focus for it, really. Very cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, so I think let's get into it. So I think one of the first things, obviously, when you're going into an event like this, um, it's quite substantial and quite big, and there's a lot of attendees there. So we would always say, you know, fail to prepare and prepare to fail kind of analogy. So what for you would the first, what is the first thing you think entrepreneurs should be thinking about when they're coming to an event like this or attendees in general? What should they do, do you think, to prepare for? Um, I, think, I think you get out what you put in with the media. If you, you know, if it's a low priority for you and you do a single press release, someone might bite, but more likely they won't. Um, and then, obviously, if you've got 1,500 journalists coming, you're not going to prep up on each individual one. Sure. It's just not going to happen. Um, and so most places, I'd guess, the right thing is somewhere between the two. Yeah. Cause you, and knowing like which outlets might be there that might cover you and how they might cover you if they do. Because there's obviously speciality tech press who will cover a startup just if it's a cool startup. They will have slots that do that or lists of things that they like at an event and they're just going to want to hear a short quick hey this is my company this is what it is this is how i different it's almost like a very short version of what you pitch to a an angel investor or a vc sort of some of the more general things certainly if you're looking at the top tier big papers or somewhere like us yeah. we don't just to do a here is a cool company kind of piece um, I don't think I've ever, ever written one. Mm -hmm. So what you might want to do is look at the kind of issues that reporters from there have been writing about lately and do you have a really cool sort of recent client or customer or sort of social issue that you think you tap into and you might not then be the focus of a piece but you might get a section in something that they're writing but that obviously takes way more research. Um, somewhere in between, you might just have a couple of really cool case studies that tie into a trend story that's happening at the moment. You know, if people are worried about, um, you know, I literally, just before I came in here, was reading about um, sort of HR apps that are doing ever more to tap uh, social media and yeah. do big data analysis. 
I'm interested in that as kind of a, other issues of it being a race issue or a selection bias issue or like hiring and that kind of stuff. So the good and bad of that interests me. So do you have things that tap into say VR or AR or those kind of things to get your brand in that conversation? And so you could maybe do three or four tailored press releases for different types of outlets. That's really interesting because I think that's one of the things we come across a lot is that obviously we have such a big number of journalists coming and they're all coming from different backgrounds and it's important as well for you know people to be quite targeted and realistic on who they're pitching to etc. I mean um, some, some journalists in certain spheres are very interested in just speaking to speakers for example or um, interested in investors and it's to kind of know if you're targeting and you're a VR company targeting the VR uh, specialist. And to note that we do have such a substantial, you know, amount of journalists that there is something for everyone out there, but it is about what people do put into it. And I guess um, this kind of, we were talking earlier about, about you know, the, the so what rule, you know, as in sometimes um, when people are pitching, and um, they they kind of think of it as an investor pitch, but for a journalist, it is obviously a different sort of pitch. What's the story? Why is it important? And um, do you think that kind of makes sense? So to avoid jargon, to make it a simple kind of clear yeah. message. So, certainly if you're looking at consumer press, if you're trying to get out and just reach an audience or reach, you know, like, yeah, we are, like, our, we are obviously, we're followed by VCs, we're followed by tech investors and tech companies. That's great. We, we like writing stuff those guys are interested in. But we're a consumer site. We're interested in the mass audience. Mm -hmm. And kind of, the rule for BuzzFeed headlines is kind of not quite what people think it is. Everyone sort of thinks it's, and you'll never guess on this one trick. And we actually, if you look, hardly ever use that stuff. Our thing is... The headline of the story is, if you were telling your friend in the pub or in a coffee shop about it, what would you say? Okay. So, yeah. If you want something to pitch us, it's really good to have, what would that be? What's the thing that an actual normal human being who kind of likes tech might be interested in? And if you've got an answer to that, that's maybe something you should be pitching to us. If you haven't, then think about, well, does that mean this is specialist? Am I trying to pitch this to investors or to business users? Or in which case, what's the best outlets that I should be talking to? I mean, the other thing, of course, is never set your heart on one reporter or one outlet because mm -hmm. you just never know what people are going to bite on or not. You should have a hit list and it should have different levels of ambition. A bit like a UCAS application form or whatever, you the application. So that, but quite varied. And I, I think into that as well, that one thing that does come up time and again when I talk to journalists is the language uh, sometimes people in the tech sphere use. The jargon they use sometimes can be a little bit, when you're writing a release, it's better to keep the language, as they say, quite simple. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think, I think the quicker and the more direct it is, the better. I mean, you've got re reporters who really know the tech detail and want to yeah. know it. And if you've, I mean, obviously you should have people who are briefed and prepared there. Don't only send a comms person who's done like 10 minutes work on your company. Exactly. But you should know it because the people who want that will ask for it pretty quickly. And like, if you're chatting to a journalist, they'll be obvious within two minutes whether they want a really detailed tech spec thing and I'll know the industry really well or not. So if you set the sort of press release to be interesting, but not sort of aggressive on language, yeah. you will get the kind of general person who's looking for a few light bits, and the ones who want more will ask you for it. Whereas if you send something with everything, you'll just freak out a bunch of them, and Definitely. you won't write it. Exactly, and then just on the topic of press releases, so with all the startups we have coming, we always ask them to kind of send in releases, we review them, we then upload them to the media portal, so they're kind of accessible to all the journalists coming along. But, you know, going back to basics, what, what are your thoughts on press releases and do you think people should write them and do you have any advice when you are writing them? I mean, less is more. There are companies who I've never written about and will never write about who I get a press release from twice a week. And yeah, you're like, 
make sure I will never write about them either because there's this thing of it's like a weird mini stalker almost you know um, it's kind of like oh guys like take the hint and it's because essentially they blast it out to an entire mailing list and we can tell that they're really bad targeted. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with doing it though it's really over demanding to expect every single thing to be an individual pitch but think is there an actual point here or am I writing a press release just because I feel like I should like, what do we have to say that's new? Um, what are we trying to do with it? And if you're going to blast it around, actually think, like, putting more, as much time in who should get this as what you put in it will help you write a better one and focus on an audience. Definitely. I mean, that's what we kind of, we put together kind of some suggestions um, on how people should write, you know, various press releases. And we, we will be sending that out to our startups. But I think... From our side of things, it is important that, as you said, less is more. Try to keep it to a page. Um, you know, keep it kind of, base, you know, simple language, understandable, and have a very clear message and a story to get out there. And um, make sure that you have a strong comment as well from your CEO. Yeah. Strong, quote. strong quote is great. Easy contact details. Exactly. And the tempting thing is to put the background first because you really care about your company and that, that you're describing and all of that. But if I'm going to write the story up, I will look for that lower down in the release. You've got to use that first two or three paragraphs to hook me down and go, oh, actually, there might be something to this. And it ties to a thing I was thinking about last week. And okay, and I'll read the rest of it. And obviously, we'll go chat and do all the other stuff. If you've buried the most interesting thing in paragraph five, I'm never going to see it. That's, that's it, exactly. It's get the most interesting to the top. And if I was sending you a press release and say you got quite a few every day, what would the one kind of headline, one thing title-wise in your inbox be that would capture your kind of... Oh, God, I, I, I never quite know what to say to these. No, I never do. It's always a tricky one. Well, it tends, it tends to be if it ties to something I've been thinking about writing anyway because I will sort of jump back and do... Yeah. It joins through. Um, you, there are tricks that you can pull that work a bit. You know, someone uh, someone yesterday uh, did one about uh, sort of, oh, I can't remember what it was, but it was to do a driving test and was essentially a relatively uh, uh, naughty comment about riding daughter, taking oh. your daughter for a ride, which okay. lots of people tweeted, but sort of tweeted with an eye roll. Um, but you know, people tweeted bits of the press release, and I suppose that's media coverage of a sort. Yes, of a sort. Um, so you can sort of try the stunt one. It does sometimes get us to click and read the release, but to be honest, it's usually just a very clear, obvious subject line that relates to something that I write about. I will at least read it, you know, off, off text stuff, but it is just sometimes a very like one sentence what it is, I will at least read it and go, oh, hang on, maybe I'm not going to write this, but someone else here wrote about this last week. I'll send this on to them in case it's helpful. Like, yeah, exactly. At that point, if I'm not writing it, that press release has done something. I've kind of thought, this looks like it's got useful info for someone here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, so yeah. you know, in terms of at the event itself, you've obviously been to Web Summit a few times, and... The layout of the event is that there are the stages, there are networking areas, and there's the media lounge. And often, you know, media are wandering around the place. So if, if you were an attendee or a startup, how would you say the best way to approach um, a journalist, if you saw them, would be um, in terms of your opinion? Um, so, I mean, generally, I'll be honest, I go around different speaking events just kind of on what I'm interested in, whether I'm planning to write it or not. And you hear a lot of stuff that might not have been what you thought you were there for. You might think, I'll have a listen because X is speaking. Yeah. And someone else at the thing before mentioned something. And so I often try and ambush people as they're getting off that. So like, do you think about what you're speaking and people yeah. ambush you? Because we also often forget to wear like press line yard or whatever. So like, if you get ambushed by someone asking sort of slightly rude questions about your company, please do talk to us because we're off the media. <laughs> Who's this? Um, so, I think it's, it's um, 
But it, it is just often, like, if you see a journalist and you know them, come say hi. And, like, essentially, we might be running to something and be late. So, like, don't take brusqueness at these things as rudeness. It is often just that literally have to be somewhere. But if there's someone that you see and you're really keen to chat to them, like, just have a good 20... Like, what would I say to... Yeah a reporter from X if I had 20 seconds, you know. Oh, hi, sorry, do you have, this would be really quick. Um, I just thought you might be interested in this, I, especially if they're a high target for you and you have actually read something. And you're I, like, saw you wrote, I saw that you wrote about this and thought you might be interested in something we're doing. Absolutely. And then pitch it is the perfect thing because we all have massive, fragile egos. And so that you have actually read something, said you liked it, but also think that your thing relates to it, it's a good sign of, ah, this might be something I'm interested in. Um, and so that's the perfect line. You won't always be able to do it, but if you know enough to recognize a journalist or their outlet, it's a good sign. And so, okay, you know, I'm from this, here's what we're doing. It's this, thought you might be interested. If, if it strikes a conversation that gets going, brilliant. If it doesn't, but they seem interested, offer a card. We do often chase up on these 20 second conversations. Brilliant, yeah, like, see that thing and you know, as well, and just to point out as well, we do have the app for our attendees as well. And if, you know, journalists are on the app and they register and if you see someone on the app, do contact them and drop them a message and they might have time to kind of come and chat to you as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, the previous summit stuff, you get quite a lot of stuff through in the weeks coming up to it, and most of it, yeah, I, I haven't replied to. Some of it feels like they're emailing every single journalist there. Some of them are clearly individual, but you, you're busy and you, you just know you're not going to write it. But I have followed up on people emailing during and before mm. uh, the event that I never heard of and that I never thought I would, and some of it has led to stuff. So, I mean, all this stuff is... I, genuinely useful we do look at it even if you know we don't reply to everything and I know that's rude but and I'm sorry it's just we get so much emails, I know and, and you know as a journalist how would you yourself kind of prepare for web summit what do you do in the run-up to the event it tends to be quick looks at I kind of think you know I'm coming this year so I tend to think what am I interested in in tech at the moment what might I write about what do I think is coming up because you know a lot of people will come and write about the summit itself. I won't tend to do this conference is happening and here's what happened. Yeah. So I'm looking to build contacts. I'm looking to hear about new stuff I didn't know about. I will always have a bit of a wonder of the stalls and the exhibitions and just sort of poke. But I tend to think, you know, so privacy security is always there. Yeah. So what looks new in this area? What looks, you know, who's there that looks interesting? What panels? Yeah look good and it, it's more about the topic than have I heard of who's on it yeah um, and then sort of what just looks interesting to me as a person um, and I'll go to a few sort of self-indulgent ones because often stories come out of that because yeah. I'll hook onto it um, and so I don't do a massive pile of research and think I'm going to write this piece this piece and this piece yeah. but I do look through the itinerary I look through the big names obviously everyone does that because you have to um, but I sort of try and go and then work out what was most interesting, what can I get out of this, what do I want to follow up on, um, and a lot of that you'll do quite quickly, you know, you'll sort of see two minutes of something and think, well, I've got, the, uh, they're here right now, I'll email, let's see if I can get half an hour with the CEO tomorrow, um, yeah. often comes off. That's brilliant, and I mean, yeah, I mean, we're we're very excited to have you um, in Lisbon back this year. Um, so first time there, have you been before? Um, only very briefly, and not for years. So really looking forward to it, actually. Well, great, and hopefully nice weather as well. Nicer than London, I'm sure. Yes, exactly, especially in November. Um, so a massive thank you um, to James for joining us today. That was really, really helpful. Um, and I hope everybody got a lot out of it. And if you have any questions, just let me know. And um, there will be details on the website. Um, so thank you for joining us. And if you want to, I mean, I just wanted to say we've got um, Branch Metrics are speaking next week. Um, so if you want to join in then, um, they will be talking about their tips on exhibiting. So thanks, guys. Bye.